Have you ever noticed how long it takes between when you power up your Express LRS receiver and you actually get connection to your radio? Today, I'm gonna to show you a way that you can significantly speed that up. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Let's start by getting a benchmark for how long it takes to get a connection between the receiver and the radio. I'm gonna power this receiver down, and then I'm gonna plug it in, and we're gonna wait for how long we see until we get that C and the solid LED here in the receiver. And you can see that it's pretty fast. It's a couple seconds, maybe. Watch what happens if I change the packet rate from 50 hertz to a different packet rate. And in fact, I'm gonna do that with the receiver powered down for a reason which I'll explain later in the video. So here we've got it set to 50 hertz. I go, well, I wanna really, I'm gonna jack that up. You know what, let's not go, let's go all the way up to a thousand hertz. We want minimum latency. Okay, now, watch how long it takes. Oh, eh, still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. Still waiting. Oh, there we go. That was longer even than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know. We'll let the editor put the time on screen. Thank you, Fabio, for that. Um, that's what we're going to discuss in this video. Why that delay is there and how you can freaking get rid of it. And the reason that delay is there is that when ExpressLRS first boots up, it doesn't know what packet rate the receiver and the module are going to be set to. The receiver is going to use whatever packet rate it has previously been assigned to use. And if the module is not also on that packet rate, the process of searching and waiting and searching and waiting across all the potential packet rates can take a long freaking time. But you can actually configure the receiver to remember what your last packet rate was, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. Now, the parameter we're talking about in this video is known as init rate, and it used to be in the Lua script, you could set the init rate manually. In other words, if you know that you always run this receiver at 250 hertz, you could just go into the Lua script, you could set the receiver's init rate to 250 hertz, voila, it would be good to go. But they've actually taken it out of the Lua script in ExpressLRS 3.4, and they've kind of made it automatic. See, what the receiver will do now is it will try to remember the previous rate that it was assigned to, and then it, you don't have to manually set it. But it's slightly more complicated than that. You see, right now, the receiver is running at F1000, 1000 hertz, but the receiver is not able to remember that it should be at 1000 hertz, because in order to do that, in order to go into its memory and say, hey, the next time you power up, be at 1000 hertz, it has to be unbound for some reason that I don't fully understand. As long as it's connected to the controller, it's like too busy to go make a note that it's supposed to be at 1000 hertz. So if we simply power it up at 1000 hertz, eventually it will connect, but the receiver actually wants to be at 50 hertz. That's what it's remembered it's supposed to be at. So if I power cycle the receiver again, it will once again take like 10 seconds to connect. What we need to do is we need to be able to tell the receiver, hey, this is the packet rate that I want you to be at. And then forever in the future, it will be at that packet rate. And here's how we do that. Well, we gotta wait till it connects. There we go. And the first way we can do that is we can simply change the packet rate from within the Lua script. So let's say that this receiver is inside a racing drone and I want it to be at a thousand Hertz all the time, forever. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna change the packet rate to anything else and then Hello, I said F500, please. There we go. I'm gonna change it to anything else. I don't know why that first change didn't take. Now we're at F500 and then I'm gonna change it back to the one I actually want it to be at. And once I've done that, in the process of changing packet rates, it very, very briefly fail safes. You don't actually see it, but it does. And in that window, when it's very, very briefly fail safe, it makes a note that this is its new packet rate. So now, if I power down and power up again, it should be just as fast as it was at the beginning of the video. Just a couple seconds. Oh, less than a couple seconds. It's almost instantaneous. 
Isn't that amazing? The other thing you can do is this. Let's say I change this packet rate to, well, really anything else. It doesn't really matter. We'll just change it to 500 hertz. And now remember the receiver is remembering that it's supposed to be at 1,000 hertz. So again, it's going to take a long time for it to cycle through and fi find 500 hertz. Well, that didn't take as long as it might have. Um, the other thing you can do is you can simply power off the controller. So if I set it to whatever packet rate I want it to be at, and I just power off the controller, now... There we go. As soon as that light starts blinking, the receiver has fail safe, and now it will remember the last packet rate that it was at. Uh, this is worth doing on all of your birds. It's so annoying to power up your controller and power up your quad and then sit there for 10 seconds while you wait for the damn thing to connect. It's super, super nice uh, to, to do this. It's just so much more convenient. Well, thank you, Express Express devs. Mm, and thank you for watching this video. If this video has helped you out, please let me remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon is the single best way for you to support the work that I do here. If you value the work that I do, if you're learning things, if you're solving problems, if you're saving money, think about throwing a little bit back my way. The minimum tier is $2 a month. Many people decide that I'm worth more than that, and you could subscribe at any amount that you want. But if I'm worth even $2 a month, come on. You waste a lot more than $2 a month on a lot of other stuff. If you've decided that today's the day, there's a link in the video description to my Patreon, patreon.com, and I'd love to have you as a supporter. And if, hey, if today's not the day, that's cool. I don't, I don't, it's all good. I'm just gonna keep making content, keep trying to be helpful. Maybe that day will come. <laughs>